Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Is This a Ghost? I'm Clayton Smith, and every week I tell a real ghost story from real history to my real friend, Patrick Dean, who doesn't take it real seriously, but who does yawn real big sometimes <laughs> right before we start recording. <laughs> this is not a good evening for you to come into this tired. Uh, you know what? I, I'm also coming into it relatively sober, which is well, also maybe not good. Uh, we, this is almost a hundredth yeah. episode. So you, 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 <laughs> that's solely on you, friend. Earned a night off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We leave for the, uh, we leave for the house of mouse in about what time. Is it 16 hours? You're one so, of the big house, right? Big house. Mm, very the exciting. Big and we're doing a double tonight. <clears throat> Once again, a back to back double oh, recording. <laughs> so. I honestly, I don't see a single thing that can go wrong. <laughs> what are you drinking there? Some sort of clear liquid with ice in it? This is, I'm glad you asked. Thank you for asking. This is a, um, I think I'm going to call it the Pick Me Bend Suicide. Oh. It was, we had uh, the dregs of several bottles of Pick Me Bend left in our bar. And I thought, mm. well, these can go into one glass to make a normal sized drink. Mm -hmm. And so it's a little bit of the uh, barrel aged mm -hmm. gin. Mm -hmm. A little bit of the hibiscus gin mm -hmm. and a little bit of the navy strength gin. Mm -hmm. You know what I'd call that one? Since since, it, since it's using the, the the dregs of a bunch of mm -hmm. bottles, mm -hmm. dragon's breath. Oh, I hate how much I like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Get out the sharpie, erase what you wrote, put write that Let's on the glass it. now. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. Dra dragon and dragons that's two g's dragons i think so yeah it's gotta I be right so. yeah. yeah dragons dragons breath dragons but like dragon okay it's possessive plural okay good mm -hmm. um that's what i'm drinking tonight yes what are you lovely you, are you drinking anything I, I might find something on the shelf a little bit later after, after i didn't come back know from i break. didn't know this was going to be a lopsided after, show no. <laughs> i'm, I'm <laughs> suddenly very terrified for how this is gonna go <laughs> i can't be the only one who in the middle of the second episode falls asleep <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man uh it's exciting on this end too because i have you'll notice here not one but two baby monitors hey. next to me nice aaron is out of town for the next few days and so i am uh, i'm on solo dad duty so it may be that at any point given this evening's recording i will have to pause for a second to go put a child back to sleep <laughs> So I will, I will be drinking uh -huh. this drink slowly and, and measuredly. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I, we've seen each other. It's been a couple weeks. Yeah. What have you, what have you been doing? Oh, nothing. Okay. Literally I, nothing. Thought, I thought so, yeah. but I thought I'd ask. Not many updates on this end. Yeah. Um, June got the stitches out. Oh, that was good. about it. About the only thing that really happened in the last Okay, that's a whatever. good thing. It's a good update. Just been doing our uh, you know normal, get ready for Disney, have a panic attack um every 12 mm -hmm. hours thing for the last week and now you are having that or someone else in your family we're taking that? turns we're taking okay. turns okay yeah. oh, that's just, fair it's cool. nice it's, it's called load sharing it's modern parenting <laughs> is when you <laughs> you take turns having panic attacks about disney world <laughs> <laughs> what uh what could you possibly be worried about with disney world it's the happiest place on earth mm -hmm. yeah and and we're going <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah, now that you say that, yeah, okay, I get it. That that, that tracks. Uh, oh no, boy. it should be it should be a blast. It's just you know, yeah. I mean, every family thinks it should be a blast. Yeah, exactly. Climbing Mount well, Everest is probably a blast as well when you get all the way up there. I that's a different it's... kind of blast, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I just came back from South by Southwest. I with heard. Bunch of my students. Was there for exciting. five days very exciting very fun really good group of students this year good group of a good mix of undergrad and grad students had a lot of fun uh i am exhausted mm -hmm. i did nothing but stay awake and eat tacos and barbecue and craft beer for like five days oh man and i don't regret it but i mm -hmm. will say it is not the same as it would have been 15 years ago <laughs> after doing that for five days <laughs> Um, but it was good. It was fun. I learned a lot. I saw some haunted stuff. Um, and, uh, I saw Frank Turner. Do you see, I don't know if you, if you noticed, I saw Frank Turner. Do you know who Frank Turner is? I don't. I'm, I'm a little What's surprised to hear that. I know you, you're, a, you're a metal. You're less of a, you're less mm -hmm. of a, uh, punk rock now, mm -hmm. but I know there was, there was a punk rock time in your life. Frank Turner. He's a British punk mm -hmm. rock, 
uh, artist. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I know him is because of producer Ryan, because he introduced (laughs) me. I, as you know, I I know nothing about music. (laughs) I know about four bands and one of them is Beyonce. Is she a band or is she? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's experienced. I've never heard her music, but I know that she exists. (laughs) So I know very little about music, but Ryan has introduced me to Frank Turner and, mm-hmm. um, and he's a great, really fun, like British kind of modern punk rock mm. artist. So I definitely recommend him. Um, but when Ryan and I go to our, our work bar, Casey's in Chicago, mm-hmm. uh, he's, we'll usually play him on the jukebox. That's kind of our like Casey's oh. unwinding after work soundtrack. Interesting. So I was at, I was at South by and I was one of the nights I was in my hotel room and I was like, I'm gonna go to bed a little early, but I was not quite feeling tired enough. I was like, well, I'll go for a short walk around the block first and see, see whose music has been keeping me up for nights on end because <laughs> that's what was happening. <laughs> and so I wandered around for a bit and I saw there was this, um, this, the, uh, one of the hotels was converted into the British music embassy where they just had like a rotating set of British punk rock acts for like four hmm. days. Oh, wow. And I was like, well, that sounds interesting. And one of my co- one of my coworkers, the chair of my department, had said that it was uh, worth checking out. And I was like, well, I'll go in there. So I went in and I, you know, I got a drink. And the, the band I was playing was pretty good. I, I enjoyed mm-hmm. it a lot. They were they were punk rock, but like in a fun, approachable British way. Sure. Okay. And I thought, okay, this is pretty good. I'll see you. So I got a drink and I, I sat on like you could, there was like a hill. I sat on the hill and just like, was like just having quiet moments myself with the band playing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that was great until I heard some students go, oh my God, is that Clayton? And then, <laughs> I turned around and there were some of my students. I thought, oh, <sighs> God damn it. <laughs> Get have one moment of peace. Um, but they came down and uh, and we were chatting. And uh, my chair of my department was also there somewhere because mm-hmm. they had just bothered him a lot. And then they came and bothered me a lot. Anyway, so I was like, well, this has been fun, but I, I think I'm going to go back to my room. But then mm-hmm. the next act came on stage and the students were like, oh, this, you sure don't want to say this is this guy named Frank Turner? And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> He's alive. <laughs> this is a real person who plays music live. I was stunned. I had no idea he was going to be there. And wow. the students didn't know who he was. And I was like, do I know someone that students don't know mm-hmm. in music? And then I got, I stretched out nice. like this. I cracked my knuckles a bit. And I got real excited. I was like, no way. So, you know, we all, I dragged them all down there and uh, we listened to Frank Turner and he was great. And afterward he was standing by uh, off, off, next to the stage when my students mm-hmm. was like, Hey, he's right there. Should we go talk to him? And I was like, yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I went and chatted him up. He was super nice. And he was like, uh, you know, where are you from? And I said, Chicago, I'm here with some of my students. I'm a college professor. And we're all here. Mm-hmm. He's like, you brought students to this? <laughs> I said, yeah, I know it's weird. Right. <laughs> and he was like, I think it's awesome. Uh, and so he, he like, he's like, well, we have to get a picture all together. And so he like called the students over. We all got a picture together. It was really cool. He was super wow. nice. It was like one of, it was, an A plus concert experience. And I, it was a total surprise. <laughs> what a great night. I was really excited. Now I did not go to bed until 2 AM. Oh. That has been the downside mm. of this. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that was, it was fun. It was good. I enjoyed it. We got some British listeners, so maybe they'll know Frank Turner. <laughs> <laughs> and I can rub that in their faces, I guess. I don't know. That's the end of my story. End of my story. <laughs> but, uh, I was really proud of myself for knowing a band and <laughs> accidentally <laughs> showing up there. Any other questions? No, I mean, I'm still just kind of stunned at staying up until two o'clock in the morning. That's just, I, I don't. It has been It's not even years. a time. Anymore. Oh yeah, <laughs> easily. <been> years. <laughs> this is the thing I always say, like when, you know, Aaron, God love her because she she's out of mm. town right now, but usually I'm the one going out. If anyone's going right. out of town, it's usually yeah. me and she's home with the girls alone. And mm. that's obviously a very challenging thing to manage. Mm-hmm. And I, but I think she also has this sense that like when I do these things, I, I sleep a lot mm-hmm. and I always find ways to not. <laughs> and that's on me, <laughs> but <laughs> I yeah. just, it never happens because sometimes I go into Frank Turner uh, <laughs> uh, concerts just by accident. <laughs> Stay up till two o'clock. Or sometimes I, I uh, turn on TV and I watch Cocaine Bear. Oh, I watch Cocaine Bear. I told you. <laughs> I think I watched Cocaine Bear another night, and I was like, I watch a movie about Cocaine yeah. Bear. Have you seen it? I have seen Cocaine Bear. It is. It is. <laughs> it is a movie. It is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I couldn't sleep for two hours after watching that movie. Oh man, it was just. Oh boy. Oh. Uh, it was uh, fun. It was. It was. It was something. It's. It's kind of like um. We'll say it was Ray Liotta's last film, yeah. right? And so Ray Liotta, <laughs> yeah. he plays 
I don't even know what kind of character you would I mean, he plays a Ray Liotta. Ray sure. Liotta in the woods sure, yeah. is basically what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's Goodfellas in the woods is his character. Uh, a, like a very inconvenienced Ray Liotta in the woods. Just yeah, cranked everything to 11. It, it reminds me that like when, when uh, it always kind of reminds me that um, Raul Julia's last film uh, was Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Yeah. <laughs> and not... Not you like, gotta uh, think that's yeah. probably not the way they wanted to go out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, oh, I would love man. to see a list someday of like very respected actors who had just completely embarrassing final roles before dying. Yeah, that's a bummer. And I don't really know who would be higher than Ray Liotta and Raul Julia at this point. <laughs> I think Raul Julia is probably maybe a little higher than Ray Liotta. <laughs> Uh, that was when I told my students the next day, I was like, man, I watched Cocaine Bear and I expected them to all be like, oh yeah, we know cocaine. And none of them yeah. had even heard of it. So I don't what? know. What? It's weird. They're all, they're, I don't know. Gen Z is very confusing. They're, co- they're college. They're like, they're half cocaine at this point, aren't they? <laughs> they're half cocaine and <laughs> half bear. <laughs> but never the twain shall meet. Mm. Um, so like, was it good? And I was like, well, no, <laughs> good is not no. the right word. <laughs> so I really enjoyed it. It was really fun. And I go, so it was good. I said, mm-hmm. again, uh, no, yeah, that's that's tough to say. But uh, uh, I didn't it, know Elizabeth it, Banks directed it. That, yeah, that really did. came through. It was, you know, it was a blast. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it 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 did have a couple of those like Farrelly Brothers type moments where you think they're not really going to do this on camera, right? And then they keep getting close, and you're like, no, they're not actually going to do this. And then they do it, and you're like, oh my god, I didn't think you could do that in a movie. <laughs> uh yeah there were some pretty shocking uh moments mm-hmm. yeah um was it margot martindale is that her name margot martindale the uh the the um the forest ranger mm-hmm. yes yeah My last name is martindale for sure i think i, 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 yeah, I, I didn't recognize anyway, she's actress. again another like very mm-hmm. well respected actor for who's been mm-hmm. doing this for a long time yeah boy her her death in that is not glamorous <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh god you're not gonna do that right nope nope you did okay oh okay. I think my, my favorite part was whenever the two um, like middle school age children find the bag of cocaine and dare each other to eat it. <laughs> and then they do. And then they do <laughs> eat it. it was that was so the part I was like, I, I really didn't think that this, how, that's how this scene was going to go. And it, yeah, by God, it did. Now they didn't like it. No, no. no so it, that's yeah. irresponsible, I think. It was a scared spark, straight so. type thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They really should, like, you know. Oh, my God. When they do the dare program, they should really bring like a tablespoon of cocaine and force <laughs> nine year old child. <laughs> Open to your eat mouth. It. Yeah. <laughs> Open your mouth. You're next. Well, yeah. Sucks, doesn't it? Doesn't. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but you are high, right? Yeah. <sighs> the one kid does it, and then mm-hmm. the other kid sees how bad that was. And then the mm-hmm. other kid also does it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right. <laughs> This is this is how this movie's gonna go. Okay, I'm like, uh-huh. I'm in. Let's do it. Uh-huh. So uh, that was no. I I stayed up late that night. Also, that might have been worth it. I don't know if I would have stayed up for the concert. Mm, cocaine <laughs> bear for the first time. Cocaine that is, bear. it was something. Well, and it's clearly a movie. Aaron is not gonna watch with me. No. So if I'm gonna watch it, it's gotta no. be when I'm out of town. <laughs> no, I I watch I watched it laying in my bed on my phone with headphones on, because <laughs> that's the only way I knew I was gonna be able oh, to man. watch this movie. So yeah. Pretty good. That's my water. Mm. Well, we have a long night. Should we get to it? Sure. Uh, okay. So we got. We're gonna again, once again, just a um, warning for the audience. This is this is double show recording night. So mm-hmm. you know, God helps all. Patrick's not drinking, uh, so maybe it'll be okay. Uh, I didn't get the memo, so <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, but here, here's the other warning about about tonight uh, tonight's double header is that I um, I thought I was gonna have time to to research two stories, right? As you but promised. But it turns out I yes, as I did promise. Mm-hmm. Now I am bad at time management, <laughs> and so the, and so this is today's especially when cocaine bear is on. Let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, I did okay. I had I had yeah. two choices. Yeah. I, I have no regrets. I, I'm just imagining you watching Cocaine Bear the whole time thinking, please let there be a ghost in this. Please let there be a ghost <laughs> Please let in this, this be research. Please let this be research. Please, please, please. Don't let Patrick yell at me about watching Cocaine Bear. Uh, and the credits rolling, you're like, fuck, God two damn hours, it. damn it. And I did Google for a little bit the true story behind Cocaine Bear to see if a ghost popped up. But I didn't want mm-hmm. to go down that rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. 
so it was on, I think on, I think on Tuesday, I reached out to, to Jen Swanson mm -hmm. and I said, Jen, I really hate to ask you, you do so much for this podcast <laughs> for literally nothing. Um, but you know, she's done some research for shows before sure. and she's offered oh, yeah. several times. And I said, would you, would you be up for doing research for one episode? I'll do, I'll do one, but if you can Seems do one, fair. be really helpful. Sure. And she, of course, because she is Jen Swanson said, absolutely mm -hmm. happy to. Um, and so I said, thank you so much. So I was on Tuesday and then on Wednesday, as you may recall, Patrick, I looked at my calendar and I remembered because of my calendar that we were actually going to record tonight on a Thursday instead of mm -hmm. our usual Monday. Mm -hmm. And I said, Oh no, we have one day. And I, <laughs> I, I texted Jen back and I said, I don't know what to do. <laughs> can, can you have your story due by tomorrow or done by tomorrow? And she, mm -hmm. um, and so here's what she, she sent me not one, but two stories. Whoa. Now here's, here's what I'll say. One of her stories uh, I'm going to read tonight. The other one is so good. And I, it's, it's such a good story. I, I want to go back in and put in some other, cause like, as I was reading it, I was like, oh my God, there are some good details here that I really want to dig into a little okay. bit. So I'm going to put that one on the back burner until next time we record. But um, one of hers was absolutely perfect. So that's what we're going to do right now. And then I had a, I happened to have a backup accidentally, a backup story done. <laughs> uh, and we're going to do that one next. So that's our two, but thank you so much, Jen, so much. You do so much for this show <laughs> and <laughs> more evidence that, um, Patrick and I are the ones who do the least work of all of Easily. us, uh, on, on so. this podcast. So, mm -hmm. uh, so this one is completely done by Jen. I've read through it once. And so it's going to be sort of an exploration for both of us. Okay. Do you read through your own notes more than once? No, but as I type them, that, <laughs> that feels like that feels like three times. Okay. Yeah, it's it's like an X3. Because mm -hmm. you always seem surprised by things you find in your notes. That always strikes well, me as Well, every odd. once in a while, yeah, listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'm just delighted to see mm -hmm. that I learned. I, I have so much going on. I have... <laughs> The amount of brain space I dedicate to the research in this show, uh, I think is appropriate. I don't know. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. what, what people expect, what it's always been. And I won't apologize for that. Um, okay. With that said, do you want to start our first story of the night? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> am I reading this right? I am. Okay. Jacob. Heather Heatherington. 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 Heather Ringtone. Jacob, Jacob Heather Ringtone. Jacob Heather Ringtone. Jacob Heather Ringtone was born in Durham, England on March 7th, 1814, to Rebecca and John Heatherington. 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 <laughs> Jacob started working in the coal banks in England at seven years old. What do you think a coal bank oh, is a coal bank is that like a well it's not a mine they would have said that so coal bank i don't know it's a bank where you instead of money you have coal instead of gold and coins you have coal boy that seems like a dangerous dangerous bank <laughs> doesn't it <laughs> like, started at seven had black lung by seven and a half <laughs> seven i started working at the dynamite factory uh you know <laughs> things worked out pretty good <laughs> Um, I don't know what that is, but when he was seven, I, it doesn't matter what it is. Seven years old is too old to have a yeah, job. Absolutely. Anymore. Yeah. Or so, yeah. too young, too yeah. young is the right word. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. If you're listening, I don't think you're about working age. Mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, admittedly, it's probably a pretty easy job. You know, I mean, you're not going to like hand a seven year old to pick X. That's going to take forever. So it's probably going to be something stupid, like getting, getting, going out and getting everybody <laughs> Jimmy John's or something. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. I think there are probably some nearby Jimmy John's for sure. <laughs> uh, let's see. His family moved to the U.S. where he continued to mine coal. Oh, so he continued to mine coal. So I think coal banks Wait. may be coal mines. Okay. Maybe like like uh, like above ground coal mines or something? Should I Google this? Sure. Why not? All right. You you make some banter while I Google coal banks. I'm... I, I'm... <laughs> You know, it's beautiful that he found his calling so early in life of of being a coal miner because they moved 
and he went right back to coal mining. I assume at the ripe old age of eight and a half, eight, nine, <laughs> yeah. something like that. <laughs> yeah, he took a break for a while to be a seaman. Uh, mm -hmm. Then he got to America. And was like, that's not for me. I'm a mm -hmm. coal man. Back in the hole. Call me back in the hole. I go. Coal bank. Here it is. An exposed seam of coal. So it's like easy. It's like cheaters coal mining. Yeah. Okay. So Which that's it, seven year old work. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you show up at the coal mine and they're like, how old are you? 12? No bullshit, you're 12. <laughs> Get in the mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is seven-year-old work. So they moved to the U.S. where he continued to mine coal with his father until his father died in 1837 or maybe 1838. So he's like 23, 24 by this point. Mm -hmm. Now he's definitely a coal miner. Yes. Not a cold banker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Jacob and his brothers, they took over took over the coal bank. Huh. I don't know. I mean, they take over the operation. I mean, you can do that a couple different ways. You could do it by force. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm the yeah. captain now. This is my coal bank now. Yeah. Do you are you suggesting that perhaps they murdered their father mm. to take over the coal bank? Oh, does a father? Oh, because he, oh, yeah, mm, maybe. Now, I mean, this is an important thing to call out here. Now mm -hmm. that Jen has done all the, literally all the research, I uh. have no context. <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you? <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. 40, whatever, is pretty young to die in the coal mining industry in the 19th century, I would imagine. <laughs> I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> uh, uh, so Jacob and his brother, they take over the coal bank and they work together for a little over a year. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say why that relationship ends. I assume mm -hmm. it some someone died, but not Jacob because he's his name is, continues on here. Okay. Uh, Jacob then goes to work for five years for Captain Fink. Uh, okay. The old uh, Captain Fink. Captain, old trustworthy Captain Fink. Yes, the most oh. trusted in uh... <laughs> Captain Metaphor. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Captain Fink seems pretty trustworthy. I mean, he's... Let me Google the etymology yeah. of the word <laughs> Fink. Boo -boo. Doesn't appear before 1838. That's uh, weird. Uh, huh? hmm. <laughs> well, that go from? gotta be a coincidence. <laughs> Probably. Let's find out. So he works for five years for Captain Fink, mining coal. And at the end of that time, he had saved $500. That's a lot. That's that a probably was a lot. Mm -hmm. Boy, what is $500 in 18? Let's see, five years. I don't know how much coal that is. 43. <laughs> it's All right, like a... see, 1843. How much coal is $500? Let's see what Google says. Oh, man. ChatGPT is going to have such a hard time with all this. Not there a lot go. of good returns here. <laughs> Just ask Chad GPT how much $500 in 1843 would buy you in coal. I'm sure she'll figure it out. It'll be fine. Okay, chat, I'm going to use Chat GPT 4. That seems important for this one. Mm -hmm. How much, well, say it again. How much coal, coal could you buy, could you buy in 1843, 1843 with $500? Okay, let's see. Chat GPT says to estimate how much coal one could buy in 1843 for $500. We need to consider a few variables. The average oh, price of God, coal per ton. Blah, so blah, much blah. talking. What a nerd. Just skip, just scroll down. Just what's, what's her answer? She's still working. It's this is the longest <laughs> answer you, I've literally ever seen. This is seen. a computer. <laughs> still going. Still oh going. God, still going. <laughs> this, she's, she's down a fifth paragraph of context. I just, I need two conversion rates. I need, I need the inflation thing and I need the coal thing. Well, paragraph five starts with during the 19th century, especially in the early to mid 1800s, coal was a crucial energy source powering factories, trains, and steamships. Oh my God. Wait, here's a mathematical formula. That's in paragraph five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> it's taking a little long to get down to math. What is happening? <laughs> I don't know about Actual... you, but I'm liking chat GPT four. <laughs> Seems pretty reliable let's do a rough calculation based on average of this range say three dollars per ton to see how much coal five hundred dollars could buy in 1843 see, there we go okay amount of coal equals total money over price per ton equals 500 divided by three this is right. a very rough estimate oh mm -hmm. okay here we finally god here we go buried in the <laughs> tenth paragraph <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
you could buy approximately 167 uh, tons of coal. See how hard that was not hard. It was helpful in the end. Mm-hmm. We came up with a number. I'm just going to trust it at this point, but it really I'm does. I'm not going to ask again. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, 167 tons. That's now that's a lot of coal. Mm-hmm. Probably too yep. much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. Okay. Oh boy. Anyway, so he took that money and instead of coal, he invested it in land. Hmm. So Jacob buys some land. In on May eighth, eighteen thirty-five, Jacob marries Eliza Betsy Armstrong. I don't Wait. know how Betsy is a nickname of Eliza, but it isn't, is in quotation marks. Isn't Eliza a nickname of Elizabeth and Betsy a nickname of Elizabeth? I'm... Hold on a second. Let me, let me ask ChatGPT. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> go back to ChatGPT 3. The 4 is four is not working very well right now. Uh, <clears throat> listen, this is. let's make a list of questions to ask Jen. Okay. <laughs> For the next time we record, which will be three episodes from now. Mm, which will be like a year and a half from now. We're going to, yeah. We'll... <laughs> yeah. So he marries Betsy, and she's from West Wheeling, mm -hmm. which is a note here. Uh, they have, oh my God, they had 14 kids. Oh. Nine boys and five girls. <sighs> now, how many do you think survived? Survived. Uh, I want to say, hold on. Uh, yeah. They had, uh, how many survived to quote unquote normal ages? <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty gruesome way to express it, Jen, but that's fine. Um, 14, yeah. normal age, I'm going to imagine, is at least 25 years old. Hard to say. Should we ask? Let me ask Jack. No, no, God, no, no. We're <laughs> here all night. I will say, out of those 14, I will say, I'll just write down the middle seven, seven total. They got nine. Ooh, it's not as good. Nine. Well, but they've got coal money, so they can. Yeah, but they also have coal. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I, it's, I don't know. I don't. I think they those cancel each other out. Uh, it's they like got... Philip Morris's kids. Like, yeah, yeah exactly. all the best doctors in the world, but they're still smoking <laughs> cigarettes from age two. They're still giving that new baby cigar into the mm. newborn baby's mouth. Yeah. So it's it's tough. Uh, you know, that's where the tradition started from. Is from you know giving the baby their first smoke. <laughs> I think so. So they end up with nine surviving children. Now, by 1839, Jacob owns all the cold mines in the Ohio Valley. Ooh, that's a lot. Maybe, but maybe it's two. Hmm. Okay, that's fair. I mean, the, so, the Ohio Valley's big, but is it? I mean, How big is it? I mean, it's just. Oh, I mean, it's all of Ohio. It's all of Valley. Then, I don't. I think I it's all of Ohio. Cincinnati oh. has some hills. Yeah. So that's wrong. Hmm. Still leaves more than two coal mines. How big is the Ohio Valley? I'm just going to straight Google this one. Sure. Oh, it's a subregion in Kentucky. So <laughs> I'm starting <laughs> to think you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> now, it does include, it runs 658 miles. There's so more than two coal mines in there. That is a substantial amount of, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. All right. Mm. All right. I think you're right. <laughs> 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 so, um, so he owns all the coal mines in that valley, and he worked those with his employees and his best friend, Jack. Jack was a mule. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is this her note or your note here? It's her note, and it okay. says, which he worked with his employees and his best friend, Jack, comma, the mule. <laughs> so <laughs> I assume that's literal. Maybe his best friend, Jack, yeah. was nicknamed the mule, but... Um, Cause, yeah, so he's the one that does all the work. Yeah. And the brains. Either way. Yeah. <laughs> and so Jacob builds a house in, uh, near the bank of the Ohio River in 1847. And this is, this is or maybe becomes known eventually as the Bel Air House. Oh, was, okay. So it was real fresh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fresh prince of a sub-region of Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know he never plays those, those extra couple verses so maybe that's what one of them is you know if you find the original eight track of mm -hmm. uh of the album uh -huh. that he and jazzy jeff did mm -hmm. that that lyric actually you get that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does change the entire mm -hmm. thing a lot 
so they build the Blair House, 1847. Now, this area here is still known. Oh, no. It's still known today as the Native American internment area. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um. <laughs> Native Americans who lived in this area used to bury their leaders, chieftains, shamans, healers, and witch doctors in these caves. Mm -hmm. And then, ironically, those bodies turn into coal. So, I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to tell you how to do things, but... <laughs> but on the other side of that, coal is coal. Yeah. I mean, I don't love the idea of burning dinosaurs either, but mm -hmm. <laughs> indeed. Um, also, that's not. It's of course never good to like build your land and mine your coal on any sort of burial ground. Mm -hmm. But there's like leaders, chieftains, shamans, healers, and witch doctors. Mm -hmm. It's a concentrated mess yeah. of of souls you do not want to mess with. <laughs> This is poor planning all around. Uh, and the tribes used to hold their ceremonies in this area, and they practiced magic here. In 1754, so way back before uh, um, mm. Belair House was built, the French and Indian War rampaged through this area, and the native massacres at the hands of French soldiers was large. Oh. <laughs> I assume that's true. Um and that's all. End of <laughs> end of that note. Okay. <laughs> Ugh. The Belair House is also believed to be haunted because of an 1893 coal mine explosion that happened in the Ohio Valley. Mm -hmm. So one of those two mines blew up, I guess. Okay. 42 mm -hmm. men were killed in the explosion. And it took days to recover the bodies. Probably because they're getting like the pieces. I would figure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and because probably very dusty down there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Keep bring, <laughs> pulling stuff like, is this a foot? No, it's a rock. Is this a foot? <laughs> no, it's also a rock. <laughs> this one's a root. Yeah. Uh, the house that that Jacob built now sits above part of that coal mine that exploded and killed all those people. Hmm. That's been a spectacular show. I bet it was great. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, here. Oh, thank you, Jen. Fun fact. The founder and original <laughs> owner of Bel Air was, of course, uh, was, oh, was not, of course, was Jacob Davis, a different Jacob. Mm -hmm. He was a successful businessman who settled in the town. Jacob uh, Heatherington, mm -hmm. along with Captain Fink, had close ties with Davis, who was also an abolitionist. Together, they worked with Reverend Truman of the Bel Air United Methodist Church to free runaway slaves. So this house was on the Underground Railroad for a while. Oh, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. that's I think it's kind of appropriate if you're a you're a coal magnate. You have an underground railroad. Anyway, um. <laughs> <laughs> that one that one I will not allow. That's fine. <laughs> so uh, now, sadly, Jacob died on June 15th, 1904 in Bel Air, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And then Jen has here in parentheses, don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will say I did give her about 36 hours to turn this around. So, <laughs> so that's on me, I think. This is cohesive. <laughs> I love it. A lot to work with here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, Jacob's son, Alexander, inherited the coal mine company. Mm-hmm. And he was assisted by his daughter, by Alexander's daughter. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Lydie. How do you would? L-Y-D-E. Liddy. Liddy. Maybe. Liddy. Okay, Liddy. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, the, so the business, so Alexander is running it with his daughter, Liddy. The business mm -hmm. starts to fail due to Alex hearing and seeing things that are not there oh uh, yeah that would distract you i think I, I would think yeah especially like your whole job is sending people under the ground if they're like that guy doesn't really <laughs> guy doesn't have you know all his marbles in place up here but <clears throat> i'm pretty sure the mine that he's making me go down to has gotta be gotta be top notch gotta be real safe i'm gonna mm -hmm. keep working for this person no question <laughs> 
<laughs> Alex also started to have epileptic epileptic seizures oh man and, de- <clears throat> and he declared that quote demons were trying to kill him yeah, that's probably what it feels like i mean i i don't know but i've got to imagine it doesn't feel not like that so here's what i think i think if demons are trying to kill you mm-hmm. they will they'll they will succeed yeah and end of thought. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you think demons are trying to kill you, they're probably not yeah. actually, because that's probably actually a you thing and not a them thing. Because if demons really do want to kill you, mm-hmm. they're going to. Nothing stopping them, really. There's yeah. nothing. There's yeah. nothing to stop them from doing that. So <laughs> these, these two demons are like, let's go kill that guy tonight. And then the, just as soon as they do, they're like, oh no, he yelled really loud. Well, I guess we'll have to try I'm, some other time. I'm pretty scared of that, yeah. so we better not try it tonight. <laughs> Let's definitely not kill him because he turned on the lights at the last second. Oh, you know, I hate the lights. <laughs> he right? knows our one weakness. Uh... <laughs> so Alex Heathering- Heatherington mm-hmm. was deemed incompetent and locked up in an asylum. Oh. Which feels like the right, feels like the right move. Yeah. Now, I don't think asylums uh, in in what is this 1904 i don't think that's a good place for anyone mm, no it might have been a fair diagnosis though it probably ranks somewhere above coal mine but i don't know how many spots in between the two actually the asylum in this case was in a coal mine <laughs> so <laughs> the ohio valley is shock a block and so they <laughs> uh. <laughs> Shortly after the commitment of Alex to the mental institution, his daughter, Liddy, 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 took over the entire coal company. She's, she's putting a Liddy on it. (laughs) And you made that joke happen. And I hope you're happy. Mm. So I was going to say Lighty. (laughs) Wouldn't make sense then. (laughs) Well, I don't. Okay. Okay. Missing the point a little bit, but okay. Uh, a few years later, Liddy also tragically died in. <laughs> okay, a few. <laughs> a few years later, Liddy also tragically died in the séance room of the Bel Air house. Uh, okay. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Uh, I mean, obviously, the first question is this mid-seance that she dies. That's <sighs> There are so many questions. I mean... <laughs> Jen, you can't just spring seance room on us like this. <laughs> uh, also, who, who creates the seance room? Is it is it the the, the father who thinks like demons yeah, who are Who decides after? this is the seance room? Yeah. Was it like part of the original plans, like the blueprint? Mm-hmm. It's like, well, yeah. this is this is your bedroom. Mm-hmm. Here's the kitchen. Now over mm-hmm. here to the side, we have the seance room, mm-hmm. of course, where you will <laughs> obviously want to do all your seances. Uh-huh. Behind that, the solarium, and after that, the <laughs> servants' quarters. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I oh, boy, seance room seems like it's like a like a fourth bedroom type thing. We're like, do, do we make this an office? You know, I mean, I made mine a podcast studio. Yeah. Should I have made this a seance room? <laughs> I'm Honestly, second guessing my decision. Seven days in a week, man. You don't have to. It doesn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> there are. That's true. That's a good yeah. point. There are six days a week. We are not recording this podcast here. Mm-hmm. I could raise so much debt. <laughs> uh, I'd probably make the podcast a hell of a lot easier on the seventh day as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I find a way to yeah. store them in here, that's mm-hmm. going to be great for the show. <laughs> It's not as this goes, we'll be talking to whatever this guy's name is. I don't know. He just screams a lot through his eyeballs. I'm not sure. <laughs> Next week, we'll be talking to Abe, put your pants yeah. back on. <laughs> damn it. So sick. He's running around his ass naked. Um, so she dies in the seance room. <laughs> and when, when Liddy died, Edwin, Edwin, oh, I looked this up earlier, except mm-hmm. also, Edwin is her son. Mm-hmm. Edwin became distraught. And at the same time, obsessed with the idea of content. Oh, no, sorry. Edwin is his sister. Ed- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, let's start over again. Uh, this is my fault, too, because last time, as you were called, Jen did notes. I was like, this is really great. There's so much detail here. I think we do mm-hmm. less detail. Um, and... And now Jen has left out only a couple details. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them being when the seance room was built, <laughs> and another 
who Edwin was, but when, when Liddy died, Edwin became distraught at the same time, obsessed with the idea of contacting his sister there mm. it is, through any medium possible. Mm -hmm. So Liddy's brother, Edwin comes into play. He wants to contact his sister. He starts consulting occult experts. Several of them were brought in from different corners of the country to help Edwin. <laughs> Connected they're all to see sister equally amazed that there was already a seance room they're like wait, 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 wait hang on <laughs> i've been trying for years to get my husband to build a seance room how did you get this this is great uh, i don't know if it's one of those uh um like mike holmes uh you know come and rescue a bad diy job type things where it's like <laughs> i don't know this contractor built this seance room and i just i, I don't i think he did it wrong I mean, by all these people in like, oh, yeah, yeah. The angles are all wrong here. This is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you want an octagon really yeah. is what you want for the yeah. bouncing of the energy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but we're going to fix it for you. We're going to make it right. And then we're going to yeah. talk to your sister. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll never see her again. Uh, at the same time, Edwin became fascinated with the afterlife and started studying the occult himself. And he also started uh, studying the art of communicating through different mediums because what he wanted to do was strengthen his own ability to speak with Liddy. Oh, okay. So he, so he didn't have to be in the, in the seance room. He, he doesn't like, want the yeah, go. He doesn't want any uh, middlemen. Here. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Next note. Currently, the Bel Air house has 17 portals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm liking this. Uh, this, this, is, this is a wild I'm ride. I'm starting to think that we should let Jen do the notes every week because this is the most excited I've ever been. <laughs> 17 portals. Okay. 17 portals. What does that mean? Give me your best thoughts, Pat, on what it uh, means. I mean, portals in the house. I'm, I mean, I don't even know if my house has 17 doors in it. No, it definitely doesn't. It definitely doesn't have 17 doors. I've in been it. to your house. There are three doors. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So, oh, by the way, I just look, here's a picture of the bell. Would you like to see a picture of this house? Oh, please. Uh, open up here while your toilet runs. Let's look at this. This is screen show house okay it's fine yeah which which window do you think looks into the seance room <laughs> Ooh, i think that i think that big uh yeah the big round on the second floor ease yeah yes or I, that's, or I agree yeah other option would be attic you think attic so be, attic would be pretty i mean i don't know i mean if it, 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 it depends is the seance room again gonna be like a multi-purpose room like we do seances here and then you know my daughter does that's this one yoga. Sure. that's the middle that's, absolutely yeah. that's that's the multi-purpose one if it's a dedicated seance room it's going in the attic you know? yeah is it the room where you like we don't want no one can know we have this because they will not come back over for dinner right. parties if they, you know, <laughs> exactly. have seance room, so we will put it up here or maybe with that in mind maybe this is the seance room oh that the, so, the, the scary little shed out back scary yeah. little shed in back i could see that yeah not impossible mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Like their podcasting studio is what it looks like to me, not in the back. <laughs> God, I'd kill for a podcasting studio in the backyard. As I check my monitors, girls are okay. All right. Um, where are we here? Okay, so currently the Bel Air house has seven, oh, 17 portals. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any in that picture, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So is she talking about windows? <laughs> Because there might have been Fox. 17 windows. Anything is possible. I don't know. I mean, it... uh, gosh, let's keep reading. Maybe, maybe an answer will appear. <laughs> Through ITC communication with Edwin. Mm -hmm. ITC communication. Is that a term we've come up against? ITC. I, I don't know. See, let me Google ITC communication. Interstate Telecommunications Cooperative? That's not right. No. How about ITC Communications Ghost? What does ITC stand for? Spirit communicating through devices. That seems. Oh, in instrumental transcommunication. Okay. All right. Ghost stuff. 
<laughs> is this one of these like the like the divining rods or the the little boxes of electronics that you use to put the knobs these are the on? One, yeah, these ones are like the guys on the uh, travel channel when they go to the ghost houses mm -hmm. have a little like little box they go mm -hmm. record and yeah. There's a ghost here saying, hello, I need you. And they replay it. It's like, <laughs> like, yep, that's it. That was totally worth watching this show for 45 minutes. Was it was now at the very end. You heard him say, I love you. Mm. Yes. Through ITC communication <laughs> with Edwin. Like those people, like the people who's like claim their dogs can talk like, oh yeah, my dog, my dog says, I love you. And the, and the dogs are, rah, rah, rah. Well, oh, did you oh, hear it? Yeah. You heard it, right? You heard it. It's clear as day. Like, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> COVID was hard on all of us, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, through ITC communication with Edwin, he claims he unknowingly opened portal. Oh, here we go. He oh. unknowingly opened portals mm -hmm. to the other side all over the belt 17 house. times. Come on. That's not an accident. That, One time, yeah. totally an accident. Mm -hmm. Two, maybe three times. Yeah. Okay, accident. Yeah. Kind of getting your bearings. Yeah. 17 times. I'm no. sorry, 17 yeah. portals. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you are opening those motherfuckers on absolute purpose. Mm -hmm. Fool me once. Shame. Shame on me. This is great to watch. <laughs> Keep going. Won't be fooled again. Okay. <laughs> Boy, you messed up almost every part of that. And I am here for it. <laughs> so <laughs> now Edwin and Liddy were also known to have servants. Mm -hmm. Most, mostly all of them were named Mary. <laughs> uh. <laughs> now that is... I, I feel rather sad about that because uh, pretty sure that I I've seen roots mm -hmm. and I think that's a, that's a roots style thing where just mm -hmm. so many people uh, came over as enslaved people. And they were like, your name is Mary now, mm -hmm. not whatever your name used to be. Now it's Mary. Mm -hmm. And this really shows the limitations of the imagination of white people. <laughs> I think, and um, we should be open about that here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you want to add anything to that? Patrick? Do not. <laughs> wise man there was one particular <laughs> god jen come on there was one particular mary uh that had a child inside of the bel-air house and it was rumored that the child had the bloodline that was need <laughs> all right i'm gonna start from the beginning i'm gonna do it all the way through it's gonna be great <laughs> sometimes i wonder if jen sets me up <laughs> uh you you be the decider here we go okay. there was one particular mary that had a child inside of the bel-air house and it was rumored that the child had the bloodline that was needed to allow an entity inside of the bel-air house to grow stronger okay rumor i'm sorry like who's who rumored this <laughs> I would like love a... for you to dissect that <laughs> statement for me because I have so many questions. <laughs> uh. I don't know who rumored it. I don't know what it means for a <laughs> bloodline to allow mm. an ent. What entity? Mm. This this uh, this sounds like the sort of thing that maybe <laughs> originates from some of the some of the ghost hunters they've had over to the house. I <laughs> you know that's that's where I think this is coming from. That would make sense. TLC says we need yeah. six more minutes. Can yeah. you talk about some nonsense for a while? Yeah. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is data documenting the fact that a servant's child was lured to the attic window and plunged to his death out oh. of the window. Oof. Hmm. This energy recurred later and lured another child to the attic window to open the window and jump. This incident occurred a third time. <laughs> <laughs> and a, oh, an adult male <clears throat> investigator was lured to the window to jump. Oh, interesting. So that's why Chad no longer is on <laughs> the TLC show. <laughs> Uh, can you hear it? It's saying jump out the window. <laughs> I'm gonna. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> uh, later, the ho 
Stallone would become abandoned. <laughs> obviously. For I yeah. think obvious reasons. <laughs> And neighbors would often claim to still see figures within it. Until Kristen Lee comes into possession of the home in 2005. This is when the true extent of the hauntings would be realized. Oh. Kristen, along with her family, would make contact with a number of spirits and have many life-changing paranormal experiences within the home. Boy, there are a lot of bullet points here. Let's see. <laughs> Let's hit the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> Many have heard voices, footsteps, and seen shadow figures or full-bodied apparitions in the house. People have witnessed poltergeist activity, and some have even been physically attacked or marked by the unseen. Mm, like a cat might? Um, yeah, a peed like, on. Yeah. But let me make a quick note here. Boop, 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 boop. They've been physically attacked or peed on by the Thank you. scene. <laughs> uh, some non neutered <laughs> ghosts have been known to mark. <laughs> did you see, by the way, speaking of um, ghost penises, did you see uh, on our social media? I think I was on Facebook the other day. Mm. Uh, Long time listener and dear friend of the show, Jen Jones. Mm hmm posted a thing maybe it was on instagram but she posted a uh one of those like redone vintage book covers mm -hmm. that was all about like punch a ghost in its dick and its balls and it was like this like 50s kid like punching it it was great uh, that's one way to tell if it's a ghost yep <clears throat> uh, uh anyway so back to the real story it's even said to be home to many spirits Makes sense because mm -hmm. we've been talking about a lot of those. One in particular is a frequent visitor who Kristen Lee says they've heard from many times. Quote, we do a lot of communication sessions and remarkable things come out, like Edwin Heatherington. <laughs> he actually <laughs> sits here and talks to us through pieces of equipment that we use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lee recalls claims of people connecting with their deceased loved ones. Others report unexplained scratches or incidents where their hair is being pulled. Oh, don't love that. Like mm -mm. Uh, Kristen's 12 year old son felt a malevolent presence in his bedroom. So he started staying at his grandmother's house. <laughs> now it could be his mom just doesn't have good candy. I was gonna say, yeah. Like if, if I give my kids 10 minutes and a map to grandma's house they would all live there <laughs> forever and that's why every time we judge grandma's house we take a different route because mm -hmm. we do not want the kids <laughs> to know to dad i there. don't want to put the sack on my head pull on <laughs> oh boy <laughs> <laughs> oh. one night during the winter Lee felt the cushion go down on the couch by her side. She woke up and saw a gray figure of a man. He was translucent, like a gray mist, so to speak, but there was physical features about him. Mm -hmm. And he had a flat affect. He had no expression. She said, quote, I screamed, who are you? What do you want? What are you doing here? <laughs> and no expression, nothing, just staring at me. It was... It was pretty creepy. Mm. Bella, our dog, was scrambling around the room. You know, her nails were tapping on the wooden floor. Total, what a dog move. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> she was barking to one point. She was, bark, she was barking to one point. I said, Bella, calm down. And when I said that, I saw my breath. <laughs> Now again, she wakes, there's a ghost sitting next to yeah. her on the couch and she's yeah. preoccupied with the dog barking. Yeah. Like you're, yeah, it's, you're being very annoying. Now, anyway, can I get back to my entire reality <laughs> changing? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. When I said that, I saw my breath and it was cold, but it wasn't cold enough for my breath to come out of my mouth. Now that's not, that's, that's wrong. That's, <laughs> I know what she's trying to say, but that's yeah. not it. <laughs> Just for the casual listener. Um, the breath will science. always come out of the mouth, guys. Correct. I'm... <laughs> I've been assured by uh, by Sister Mary Paul in my my high school English class or high school chemistry class. Uh, we've done a lot of medical class. episodes on here, that's and that's what I've learned. 
Uh, so that was very strange. And then the man got up and I felt the cushion come back up. The weight of the cushion, it just rose up again. And he walked through the living room into the foyer and he vanished. Mm. After I tried to wrap my head around what had happened, I physically got up and I shook Hefe, the dog, I her husband. Oh, and I was like, I just saw a ghost. And he says, you work too hard. <laughs> you're just you're too tired. Go back to sleep. You had a bad dream. And that's where we left it. So uh, he mansplained mm. it away. And yeah. she, I assume, learned mm. that she was wrong. Because <laughs> that's how it goes. I yeah, put myself in Hefe's shoes. I'd do the exact same thing. If my wife's like, wake me up in the middle of the night. <gasps> I just saw a ghost. Like, yeah, uh, you know. I think you just I think you just need to go back to bed. I think yeah. and the thought happen. process here is not I don't wanna I don't think you're telling the truth. It's mm. what is the thing I can say that will get me back to sleep most yeah. quickly right now? <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about this in a real way in the morning, but I uh, what is what mm-hmm. what are the words that I need to say mm. to go back to bed? <laughs> Patrick, the basement's on fire. Right. We're not in the basement though. We're <laughs> in a different part of the house. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gosh, Amy is lucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. One of the most well-known stories associated with the Bel Air house is that of a young girl named Emily. According to legend, Emily died in the house after falling down the stairs, and her spirit is said to still haunt the house, and visitors have reportedly seen her ghost, and they have heard her voice. Hmm. Other reported hauntings include the presence of a malevolent spirit known as the Shadow Man, Hmm. also strange mists and orbs, and unexplained temperature changes. Some visitors have even claimed to have been physically attacked by unseen entities while inside the house. And final note here, the Bel Air house is now... Rent it out by Kristen. (laughs) (laughs) Which I think is an excellent way to end a story. Thank you, Jen. (laughs) Um, How much, how much would you pay in rent? Like, or how low Mm -hmm. would your rent have to be to live Mm -hmm. in a house where you, that you knew that you like were convinced was haunted? Oh boy. I don't know. I'd pay, I'd probably have him take at least 75 bucks off easily um that feel off what off the off the rent <laughs> well i know but like, <laughs> if your rent is three thousand dollars 75 uh-huh. bucks doesn't feel like a whole lot hey you know value is value so that's a so, flat that's a flat that's rate a, that's that's a flat yeah you're saying okay like okay. like a like a like a pet fee in reverse <laughs> okay <laughs> I think about the wording of that for a while, but I I would do a percentage for sure. You would mm-hmm. you would do flat seventy would do and seventy five bucks flat ghost fee seventy five bucks. Like if you walked in, okay, during the tour mm-hmm. of the apartment, you're walking around, yeah. you're going upstairs, you're checking out the you're checking the plumbing and stuff, right? And you turn a corner and there is a ghost and you see mm-hmm. it, right? And that ghost is screaming at you or whatever. You think? Well, I'm gonna I mean, seventy five bucks off this rent, please. Seventy five bucks. That would be the silent ghost fee. I mean, if they're going to scream, that's 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 just as bad as loud neighbors. That's much worse. Yeah, I would that's need, bad. I would need to t- take up a lot more than if it was a screaming ghost. Okay, how much more? One hundred and fifty. <laughs> okay, so okay. Du- I mean, du- that's a percentage wise, that's a big jump. It's, I mean, it's just it feels like they um, let you. <laughs> feels like you're pretty comfortable living with a ghost. Is mm. what I'm taking away from this. Mm. Okay. Could be. Well, no further questions, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, thank you so much to Jen Swanson for putting together these notes. Um, gosh, I had a blast going through this. What a wild trip. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I hope you all did too. Patrick, did you like this? Or did, how would you rate Jen uh, and her abilities? And uh, go ahead. Oh, I'd say like a, like a 75. <laughs> just love that number so much i don't even know what that, <laughs> I don't know what that is <sighs> well i'm sorry i asked and listen jen thank you so much this was great i had a blast hope you all had a blast is this a ghost is a uh, production of smith show media 
The notes were taken by not me, Clayton Smith. And all the funny jokes are from Patrick Dean. The notes this week actually were taken by Jen Swanson, who also does our video editing. Thank you so much, Jen. Our uh, audio editing is Jeremy Swanson. Our social media editor Jeremy is Jeremy Montoya, by the way. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Swanson does Montana. everything on the show, but we don't do the uh, audios. Well, sorry, uh, Jen and Jeremy. You're both going to have to get divorced, marry each other, and take Jen's uh, former married non-maiden name. Mm-hmm. It's weird, but it's for the podcast. So <laughs> It's canon now, guys. Do it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Montoya is uh, is Jeremy's name. Sorry. God, that's like the third time I've gotten Jeremy's name wrong. And I know Jeremy's name and what he does here very well. And I I do want to stress, I am so grateful, uh, despite what it sometimes sounds like. <laughs> Did I mention I was at South by for the last five days? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I am so tired. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and social media is uh, is done by Kai Valanis. Thank you to all of you, to all the people whose names mm-hmm. I got. Probably flawlessly once I edit this, I assume. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pat, are you ready to go pour a drink and join me as we get I ready think for I our will. second episode recording of the night? I think Thank I will. God. All right. If you liked this, please give us a rate and review on, uh, on whatever you listen to. And, boy, we're going to dive in. We're going to see you again next time on Is This a Ghost? Are you wearing a shirt that says, Meet Me in St. Louis, but M-E-A-T? Yeah. I need that. Where did you get that? Adam Steakhouse. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Why have I never thought of that? That's good. I think about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would too if I owned it. <laughs> oh, I would stroke my chest every day that I didn't wear it. Thinking, mm-hmm. mm, it's going to have meet me in St. Louis on it. It's starting to wear a hole in my over my pelt right here in the middle. <laughs> Your pelt, huh? Mm-hmm. Gross.